Welcome to Woman Power, the show about women empowering other women. I'm your host, Lisa Diane Wedgworth, and today we're talking about aging brilliantly. This episode is entitled Aging Brilliantly. I appreciate this word choice. Tell me, what does aging brilliantly mean to each of you? For me, aging brilliantly means finding peace, both peace within and peace with others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's lovely, yeah. So for me, I remember a professor I had in college who was teaching a very difficult course, mm -hmm. but his brilliance was the fact he could take this complicated, mathematically-based material and make it easy to understand. Mm -hmm. So brilliance to me is, then if we're looking at the synthesizing of mind, body, spirit, when they are all harmonized, isn't it just the easiest way to mm -hmm. shift and to move? And so when we do that, when we choose to live that way, that is brilliant aging. Mm -hmm. Then it's all in the quantum field. It's all, you know, with spirit, and it, it's a flow. So easy, I think, is the reason why brilliant means easy for me. So having a harmonious balance and relationship with the mind, body, and soul, and being at peace with yourself allows you to be at peace with others. Mm, right? I like this path, right, of, of mm -hmm. leading towards a brilliantly aging. There's a plethora of information that exists from gurus to philosophers to psychiatrists about the relationship between the mind and the body. What are your thoughts, your understanding about this relationship and how it affects aging? Well, I think the, to keep it simple, because we're looking at an enormous topic here, the, the mind and the body are interrelated, of course, we know. So, but the, the brain is really the computer, it's the hardware, it's the drive. The software is the mind, that's who makes the decisions and the choices and reflects. So again, back when you harmonize mind, body, spirit together, then that is what takes you through the evolutionary process. Interesting. Nora? In the age-old system I teach, which is Ayurveda, 8,000 years old, Ayurveda tells us that first comes spirit, Spirit forms the mind, and the mind, our thoughts, form the body. So say you have emotional pain, it's going to show up somewhere in your body, mm -hmm. a shoulder or a hip or a knee. So important, so important for us to keep on thinking positive thoughts, because that forms the body. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So when we think about this relationship and positive thoughts influencing or affecting our bodies, how does one incorporate this practice of being aware? How does one incorporate this practice of becoming more mindful of our present experience? Well, that's mindfulness, <laughs> which seems to be a whole new arena today and an enormous amount of material being produced for it because because, excuse me, like you said, the mind has thoughts and thoughts are negative or positive will then will create exactly the same vibration. So we're formed by our senses. Yes. So everything we, we taste, we smell, we see, we feel, we hear, that's the way we interpret the world. So that's mm -hmm. actually going to form our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And going back to what you were saying about mindfulness, you can be mindful in everything you do. Say you're going to get some money from the ATM. Walk there mindfully. Feel the earth beneath your feet. Smell the smell of the ocean. See the clouds and the blue, blue sky. All of that will form you. So a process, the way to incorporate is becoming, to slow down really is what I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. To slow down, to be in the moment, and to be aware of and appreciate literally every experience that we're having. Right? You are so, so right, because being in the moment, mm -hmm. that's really all we have. Yeah. And the thieves of our life are the past and the future. Mm -hmm. Miracles only happen in the now moment. I'm a miracle junkie. I mean, that's what I, I want miracles so that life is easy and flows. It only happens right now when you're fully present, like we said attached to the earth, grounded, aware, no other thoughts, just 
like a three-year-old, three-year-old going into a party. They run around and go, where's the party? Who's going to love me next? Because they are only in the now moment. So's the puppies. You know, they only live now. So we could learn from them, too, how to be so focused. And then if there is a miracle around, we'll get it. I like that. So we're talking about thoughts in our mind. At the same time, we have to be very aware of and acknowledge, rather, that there are very real physical changes that occur in the body as we age, mm -hmm. whether it be crepey skin or sagging breasts or arthritic joints or diminished vision and or hearing. How do you personally, how did you personally embrace those changes in your body? And then how do you guide others to embrace their own changes to live a more joyful and full life? Mm. It's so true what you say, and we, we can't stop the aging process. All of our hundred trillion cells in the body are pre-programmed to die, but we can slow it down hugely. And uh, funnily enough, actually, I'm more at ease now with my body than I, when I was young and... Um, Younger. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'd like to uh, trail on that. So you said you're at more at peace now. Mm. What did you do to get to that place? What did, well, I, actually, I think we'd really love to know, what, what did it feel like to not be at peace? What did you think? Mm. How did you operate in the world? And what specific changes, tangible changes, did you make to be at peace with your body? I think a lot of people really need that guidance. I think I blamed my poor body for whatever was going yeah. wrong in my life. That's, a, that's real, right? Yeah. We all do that. Yeah. For women especially. Mm -hmm. But now, sure. But um, then I, I incorporated one thing which has made a huge difference. Every morning, I start with a hot oil massage. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of sesame seed oil. I heat it up, and I do this lovely nurturing massage. It takes about five minutes. And of course, you're going to do this in the bathroom because where else are you going to do this? So you see yourself and you think, oh, not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of aging. It never was a factor in my life with all the plans I made. I never planned to age. Mm -hmm. It kind of like crept up on me. And so I facetiously say, you know, age is only a number and mine's unlisted. And it's becoming the truth. Mm -hmm. So how you experience yourself so I'm going along all my life now aging whatever and aging I don't wear a bikini anymore but you know I'm still out there doing my life and because I live at the beach and it's very dark there where I keep the blinds down I put my makeup on at home but before I go into a meeting I pull the mirror down in my car mm -hmm. to look and see is an eyebrow here and the lip over here yeah. and it <laughs> happens but anyhow so I pull in front of Metro Cafe one of our places where we would love to have meetings yeah. with the people in our commission and this it is dark but I have the top down on my car because I'm a teenager and I pull <laughs> the mirror down and as I pull the mirror down to fix my makeup the sun comes out and I swear I saw every line and wrinkle in my face that I had never seen before. <laughs> now, honest to God, and my immediate reaction was, ah! Now, <laughs> people looked at me, and, and yeah. I said, okay. And I heard a voice, and I don't know if it was an angel or just my higher self or my lower self. <laughs> it said, yes, Diane, you have a lot of lines, and you have a lot of wrinkles, and those are your stories, your journeys, okay? Right. And look at it. You are still a beauty, but you are an aging beauty, mm -hmm. and you're going to help a lot of women age beautifully without going to therapists and injections and doctors and living in the beauty, mm -hmm. in the beauty of aging and being the wisdom and all that yes. a beautiful woman has as she ages. So, as I said, age is only a number and mine's unlisted. Well, I appreciate you both being honest about that experience because there are so many um, people, but women specifically, that that have difficulty accepting these changes in our bodies, you know. Mm -hmm. um, just even me personally, I turned a certain age last year. Congratulations. And, well, thank you. <laughs> and then I was probably at 85% at peace with aging. Today, I'll say I'm closer to 95%. But I, yes, I do it. practice um, that as well. I have a loofah and, you know, scrub my body gently and put aloe vera and oil on to just really take care of my body and appreciate it. Self-care. Self-care. Self-love. Self-love, self-care, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So, Nora, I'm really interested in your story. You are a third-generational healer coming from a matrilineal line of homeopathic healers. You have practiced um, Ayurvedic uh, medicine for 
many, many years and over two decades practicing yoga. You run a successful business rooted in Ayurvedic practices. What have you learned from your experience that you want us all to know about aging and healing the body for optimum living? Mm -hmm. I think all the systems that we have here on this earth, there's only one system which has been proven to work time and time again, mm -hmm. and that's nature. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we we revert nature. to nature. Yes, we mother yes, nature. mother, not a female. We revert yes. to nature <laughs> whenever we need to be healed. We look at uh, natural products yeah. over um, chemicals, and we look at this age-old system of Ayurveda based on um, the five elements, being space, air, fire, water, and earth. And we bring those elements back to balance in our own bodies. Mm. You do this individually, too, for everybody. It's not like this is the one program. Everybody has, gets a program for their body system. Correct. You revert to the balance you had when you were born, and mm. that's perfect for you. So what does the system look like? Is it a combination of nutrition and physical exercise and meditation? You hit the nail on the head. Okay. That's exactly yeah. what right. it is. Yeah. You start with your diet, because if your diet isn't good, then medicines won't help anyway. And if your diet is good, you won't need medicines. Mm -hmm. So you are not so much what you eat, but what you can digest. Mm. And for one person, he might be able to digest a rusty nail, and the other person can't even digest a ripe mango. Mm -hmm. So you work on your digestion. So even that person who's eating healthy, let's say, and can't digest the mango, that mango is toxic for that person's body. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it interrupts and the aging process. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. And also what we cannot digest, we just tend to pack somewhere in the body to store as toxins or as fat. And you ask what, the, what Ayurveda is based on, so it is in the, in the first place on your nutritional plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then in the second place on your lifestyle, mm -hmm. or your, your, even your routine which you have every day, getting up at the optimal time for you spending some time doing stretching or yoga, which is optimal for your type, mm -hmm. and even eating according to your type. So say you have mm -hmm. much more fire than somebody else, you would, have, you would eat things which would cool you down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I like this, and I like that you're saying for you or for your type, mm -hmm. because so many times we read books or we read blogs or get information from um, someone um, and it's a blanket program, yeah. and it doesn't work for everyone, but we have mm -hmm. to find that thing that's right for us, and that's mm -hmm. the right nutrition, right exercise, and I like that you said the right time for waking up, yeah. right? Lisa, you've hit the nail on the head, and it just shows how intuitive the system is, yes. because you grasped all the, the, the essence of it right away. Yeah. Oh, well, yes, you know, I am a certain type of woman, and I did study yoga, so it's here. True. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging it. <laughs> but all of this, I think, boils down to self-care, yeah. taking care of ourselves. And self-care is an important component to healing. As women, we assume multiple roles, taking on loads of responsibilities. What is one mm -hmm. suggestion for self-care that each of you would like to share with us today? I would say, have a daily routine. So you get up early, you do things like uh, you scrape your tongue because that stimulates certain digestive points in your system. And then you take a swig of sesame seed oil mm -hmm. and you swish that around your mouth. Then you do that lovely hot oil massage. It takes about five minutes. And then you have a lovely glass of warm water with lemon to cleanse the system. Mm -hmm. I like that. What about you, Diane? You know, I'm at the stage that I'm in, um, I like that better than the word age, but the stage that I'm in, I like shortcuts, okay? I, I know I'm not going to go to the gym for six months or whatever. I have to find a little energy exercise. But I think the, the one thing, if I could share it, that might be anchored, is I have learned that if I pause just a moment between a phone call, going through a door, getting in my car, the next encounter in my life, if I just pause, my body now knows in my mind and spirit how to clear anything in the pet and be totally present moving forward. So now it's almost autopilot. I've been doing it so consciously. Mm -hmm. So that pause, if we could learn to pause. So when I started out, I would set my alarm on my phone 
and every hour it would buzz and I would go, oh, where am I? Oh, I'm, I'm angry. I'm, you know, yeah. I'd reset, reset so that I could more quickly stay in the energy field where life is easy. Mm -hmm. So the pause, if they could just do the pause, it would help them morph on the evolution mm -hmm. stage much more quickly because they wouldn't stay stuck in past or yeah. future. And I think both of your responses are really interconnected, right? Because in order to make this routine, you have to take time, uh, take a pause for yourself, right? Absolutely. Make time to do something that's important for you to mm -hmm. take care of your own self. You know? mm -hmm. I'd love for each of you to share your best tip to guide us towards maintaining a brilliant mind mm. as we age. And I know that they're related, right? We're talking mm -hmm. about the mind and body, but specifically the mind. I'd say we use the breath. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Because the breath brings us back to the now. Mm -hmm. The breath clears our thoughts. Yes. So the just, big pause. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's your pause again, which you oh were talking about. Oh, my God, about. yeah, no, but, that, but, you're, but also body-wise and mind-wise, the breath puts you in stillness, and stillness is the communication. So it's the healthiest thing you could do for both mind and body. And after all, what's the difference between us and a corpse? It's oh, prana. I, I hope it's, a lot. <laughs> it's, 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 it's prana, it's the breath. Yes. It's mm. the breath. And that takes energy to each of our hundred trillion cells, nutrients, mm -hmm. and then when we breathe out, it releases that which is no longer needed. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Would you like to lead us in a prana? I would love to do that. Yes. yes. So let's just make sure that we uncross our legs, mm -hmm. right. sit with our hands on our uh, yeah. thighs or the palms yeah. up, and let's all close the eyes. Feel, going back to mindfulness, Feel that your feet are, in our case, on the rung of the chair. If you're doing this at home, mm -hmm. your feet are on the ground. And you're sitting evenly, both hips. Your body is relaxed. Feel that you're breathing in golden, golden prana, golden breath. Take it to wherever it's needed in the body. It might be somewhere where there's pain, physical pain. It might be somewhere where there's emotional hurt. Let your breath go to that place. And as you breathe out, release all that is no longer needed. And then let's blink the eyes open. Hmm. That's a lovely reset right mm. there. I mean, it just yeah. takes it takes you home again. And you can do it whenever you like. Yeah, and whenever, in traffic, wherever. you can do it in the car. Yeah. The yes. one thing you can do, and you can do it in traffic. Yes, yes you, you can. can. Great. Right. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Really gorgeous. So breath, nutrition, taking time for oneself, positive thinking, affirmations, really just making time to be still and appreciate who we are by putting good things in our bodies and doing good things for our bodies. Ladies, thank you so much. This mm -hmm. has been a wonderful conversation. <laughs> and I already feel, I feel, I'm now at 100%. Yeah. Okay, I'll say I'm at 100% with aging, and I'm going to do it brilliantly. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Lisa. You thank, thank you. Really are. Thank you. Oh, oh. That's a huge compliment. Thank you. Thank you. This is really great. I'm going to have to, I'll definitely it's hard to introduce the fabulous Diane Miller, who's been a stellar citizen and contributor to the city of Santa Monica for over 50 years and currently serves on the Commission on the Status of Women. She is totally dedicated to the sovereignty of the feminine and gets to experience it in every facet of her life in this beautiful community of Santa Monica. Diane, you spoke briefly about the trifecta of power when the mind, body, and the spirit are in a harmonious partnership. Can you go into a little bit more depth about that? That's how the world really works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so aging is a physical imperative. However, 
getting older or going old is your choice. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. When we live a stressful life where we're not integrated, we're mm -hmm. not relying on our divine energy, mm -hmm. when we're not grounded and focused, mind, body, spirit, all humming mm -hmm. like a Ferrari, mm -hmm. then we stay on a pathway where we continue to evolve mm -hmm. and change. And my favorite word, it's easy. Mm -hmm. It becomes... And isn't it time we get easy? Yes. Do we choose easy? Yes, I like that. It's easy. Yes. Living a life that's Even easy how you said it. Look, see how you start to yeah. flow. It just saying the word just sends a vibration through your body where you just comfortable and you exhale. <sighs> right? You exhale yes. and relax. Yes. What was happening in your life when you became aware of a need to embrace a more spiritual outlook? Oh. In life they say there's seven deadly sins. I think there's only one, boredom. So there I was with my third husband in an idyllic life on paper, you know, the house and thing, the family business, my own interior design mm -hmm. business, and a brand new little Mercedes. And so I, I, I've been a very happy woman, and yet inside, deep inside, I was yearning for something. Mm -hmm. I was lonely. I, Peggy Lee said it best, mm -hmm. is this all there is? Mm -hmm. You know, it had to be something more. So I was sharing with a girlfriend. She had a great therapist, spiritual therapist, mm -hmm. and she said, why don't you go and see him? Mm. Two sessions, he identified that I really had separated, probably from the nuns, you know, all that. Mm. I was never going to be good enough to get into heaven. And so that was where my yearning to go on the spiritual path, and then it became easy to find a spiritual path mm. once you open yourself up to it. And I became the woman that I am today by changing my life to follow that directive and have it be, again, easier. I think it's important um, getting to a place of awareness so when we feel that longing, that yearning, that we can be motivated or inspired to move. And that's what you did. And when you took this risk, took, made this choice mm -hmm. to partake on a spiritual journey, what was one of the most influential lessons you learned? I think it's the biggest and the most important for all of us. And that is to become your most connected, authentic self, mm -hmm. no matter the cost of the journey. Mm -hmm. And we all have the same mission and purpose mm -hmm. in life, even if we have a medical calling or something. And that is to become the greatest, grandest vision and version of ourself. Mm -hmm. So if that's the game, then wouldn't I want to do that more easily anyhow? I wouldn't want to have to create the best me all by myself. Mm -hmm. So we, I stay very connected, and I spell we, W-H-E-E, -E, by the way. We. <laughs> yes, so we <laughs> get healthier. Yeah. We go do this. Well, I love your outlook on life, your positive thinking. You've led a very interesting life. You've had five husbands and 11 careers. What keeps you going? Oh, drugs. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what my drug is? I'm a joy junkie. Mm. I, I truly am. I go where the energy is with new people, new places, new things. I have like seven projects bubbling yeah. on my wolf toff range in my head. Mm. You know, I, I go for, I love brand new. I'm immature, you know, and the, I have more fun than anybody I know. I mean, I've had three men in their 30s and 40s ask me to be their cougar. <laughs> Please. I mean, who gets that at my stage, right? So all I know is that the proof is in the pudding. I, I love that and that you are committed to having fun in your life. It's really, really important. And Lisa, excuse me. It yeah. is number one with me. Okay. I, I suffered enough underground all my life, even though it looked good on the mm -hmm. outside. And if it's not fun, I'll go to London and marry money. I mean, I call him every year to make sure he's still alive so I can use the line. <laughs> but there's a lot of truth in that. No, it must be fun. I like that. It's, it's easy. You've, you've made a choice of easy. You've made a choice to live your best life. And, um, you know, M. Scott Peck writes in The Road Less Traveled that we're all given a map. And that map is our story. Mm -hmm. And that we have a choice to rewrite that map to live a successful life, to live a happy life. What is the story that you've written for yourself? First, I'd like to just amp amplify a little mm -hmm. on story. I do so much work with so many women now, it is my joy. Mm -hmm. However, when people tell you the story themselves, whatever, if you really look at it from Mount Olympus, what they're really telling you is the 
incidents along the way that kept them from becoming the greatest, grandest vision and version of themselves and why they're not living their most authentic self and having fun. Yeah. That's what everyone's story is, and they tell that story over and over again, mm -hmm. and it becomes a cemented neural pathway, mm -hmm. and you automatically go there all the time so there's no growth. Mm -hmm. So the new story that I choose to write mm -hmm. is an improv. Mm -hmm. I just hook up with spirit and I go out there and then eventually someone will take notes and write it because I don't like to type. <laughs> you know, and, and it'll be the story will come after I've had the journey. Like yeah. I, have a, I have a book now, I have a journey now to yeah. hear. Yeah. And I'm just looking to see where the next party is. Yeah. I think that's important. And I'm glad that you said that, that we can get stuck in um, a rote lifestyle, a rote way of thinking, right? Mm -hmm. And that keeps us stagnant. And it's important to make time to self-reflect and to rewrite our story. And that might be quite often. So Diane, I'm sitting here with you. It's been a pleasure. You're beautiful. I love your energy. I want to be like you when I grow up. But I do have a question I want you to share with us all. What are three must-haves oh. in your life? Only three? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll take the convertible because I must have a convertible. But, <laughs> and I, but I have one. So raw, pure coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Skin, face, hair. I threw every other cream out. No surgery or anything. This is, you know, wow. 80 the next big birthday, yes. you know. So, and Congratulations. Then, thank you. And then to reset whenever we get stuck and I still get stuck in life. The breath is everything. The mm -hmm. breath is prana. And there's a little technique called the infinity breath. And when mm -hmm. you just do the symbol with the breathing... You'll just calm down and the mind will quiet mm. and you'll go home again. Mm. And the third thing, which is what I now share with every chica I meet, is I live in a, in a world of gratitude. Mm. So your new G-spot is gratitude, honey, gratitude, okay? Yes. <laughs> I accept that. I accept that. You got it. I love it. I love it. Coconut oil. Right. The infinity, infinity breath. Infinity breath. Yes. And being grateful. Oh. All the time. And see, when you do, I do this, yeah. grateful. I go, thank you, as I'm, I'm grabbing for more. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. It's beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Diane. It's I've been loved lovely. being here. It's been lovely. And since I, like Frank Sinatra, believe the best is yet to come, yes. call me back in five years. Okay. You have that commitment. You got you it, darling. Commitment. Thank you so <laughs> this much. This is wonderful. We should have coffee. <laughs> yes. Lunch. For sure, we should for take sure. lunch. We will. We will. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today in the studio, Susan. You are a producer, author, life coach, and yoga instructor known for the television series Forever Yoga and Yoga for All Ages, as well as your current series Mind Body with Susan Foxley here on City TV Santa Monica. Many cities are prioritizing wellness. Why is Santa Monica an ideal place to live and do business as a yoga instructor and life coach? Lisa, first of all, I'm so honored to be on the show with you today. Oh, what a you. treat, what a treat. And Santa Monica is the most incredible place to live. Mm -hmm. Lisa, I've been here for over two decades. I think I've been here about 25 years and I've been teaching he yoga here that whole time. Um, before that, I lived in San Francisco and was teaching yoga there. I moved here and most of my clients, Lisa, are 60, 70, 80, and even 90 years old. And yoga is the best gift you can give yourself as you grow older in life. That is extremely impressive. I look forward to being 90 and practicing yoga and doing whatever it is I want to do at that time, at that age of my life. So, and I appreciate you sharing that your clients are between the ages of 60 and 90 because we do live in a very youth oriented culture. So I'm interested in how you employ yoga technology to guide your clients through the various stages of life, more specifically aging. Very good question. Uh, first of all, I teach yoga one on one and I also teach yoga here at City TV at eight in the morning. But when I give private yoga, I also work with people's minds and their thoughts. So we constantly do affirmations and visualizations and breath work with mm -hmm. yoga. So including the visualizations and the affirmations, choosing to look at, I get to age. Mm -hmm. I don't have to age, I get to age. Kind of like I get to get up in the morning and do my dishes. I get to get up in the morning and go to work. Mm -hmm. I get to grow old. Not that I have to, I get to, it's a privilege. Mm -hmm. 
Some of my clients have gone through chemotherapy. Some of my clients were diagnosed with ALS. Some of my clients have dementia. And they get to grow old with dignity. They get to grow old. It's a privilege. So I help them focus on all the wonderful, positive things about growing older. I really like the inclusion of the word get, right? Because it makes living a priority, right? Yes. It makes living a privilege yes. that I get to get up, right? So, so many times we complain about cleaning, washing dishes, but like you just said, I get to wash yes. dishes. I get to vacuum. I'm grateful for the fact that I can use the, my limbs, right? Absolutely. My arms and my muscles and everything works. That's, I think that's really beautiful. How did you find yoga? Very good question. Um, I am an identical twin sister mm -hmm. and I'm one of nine siblings and I was going to college in San Francisco at University of San Francisco mm -hmm. and my twin sister took me to my first yoga class in college and I became hooked. And um, I spent most of my time from the neck up and when I went to my first yoga class, I connected with the neck down mm -hmm. and I got to drop back down into my body and get back into my breath and get back into my toes and get back into my inhales and my exhales. And it was just delicious. And I continued on. My spiritual teacher said, follow your bliss, Susan. Those are Joseph Campbell's words. Follow your bliss. And when you follow your bliss, you know you're at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. I like that. And I like this awareness of living in the full body, right? Not just from the neck up. Yes. Because we exclude the breath when we're just living from the neck up. So you shared in your early experience being introduced to yoga um, that you were disconnected from your body. I think this is a beautiful transition to talk about your workshop from mixed up to fixed up. What were you experiencing in life that led you to create this workshop? Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Lisa, for asking. Um, I've been surrounded by a lot of yogis and they were doing lots of yoga and they were vegans, eating right, but they had chronic negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I also had chronic negative thoughts mm -hmm. and I was 30 years old. Sadly, I was widowed with a young child mm -hmm. and I was still teaching yoga, but I was still having a lot of negative experiences and negative circumstances. And I, I learned the law of attraction and I learned that if I can change my thoughts, Lisa, we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day. Mm -hmm. And most of us have the same thoughts yesterday and the dis day before and the day before. And sadly, most of them are negative. So I learned that if I changed my thoughts, I put an index card in my living room mm -hmm. that said the only thing I have to deal with are my thoughts. Because good thoughts go into good feelings. They sure do. And I'd love to read a bit from your book if you don't mind. Please. So you have this wonderful book, Mixed Up to Fixed Up. And there's a passage that I just really love. The chapter is, don't get stung. Sometimes I pretend to be a medical doctor, a psychiatrist or a lawyer, and I am none of these. Giving medicine, money, or legal advice is stepping way out of my expertise. As I've said before, there are three kinds of business. My business, God's business, and none of my business. I think that is so powerful, right? Because when we're aware of, our lane, right, when we're aware of our business, we allow people to have the grace of being on their own path, right, and it leads to their joy and our joy. So I think it's just really wonderful. How can we find you? Thank you, Lisa. You can find me on SusanFoxley.com on okay. my website, and you can find me at Channel 16 City TV. Wonderful. I'm there every morning at 8 a.m., bright and early <laughs> to get on your yoga mat with me. Yes, I commit to that. First thing uh, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., I will unroll my mat and I will be participating in yoga with you. Susan, one last question. At the end of the day, what is your favorite yoga posture after a busy day to relax and to reconnect with yourself? Really good question. Um, forward bends are the best before you go to sleep because it quiets the mind and it works the parasympathetic nervous system and it just slows you down before you get into bed. Forward bends are really delicious and also turning around and elevating your legs up your headboard because it, it puts the blood down your legs into your digestive system for a very delicious quiet sleep. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed having you here. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa.